Hello, this is JNM with a Blender 2.8 tutorial in which I want to show you some tips for retopology and a nice free add-on called Draw X-Ray. In the previous part I told you that enabling the in front option of the viewport display and defining a color for the viewport shading is a nice way to see your mesh above the high poly surface. Which seems to be true for a simple retopo, but when it comes to doing retopology for more complicated parts, it is really annoying that the in front option has no real back face culling for vertices and edges. And this makes the whole feature almost unusable. Perhaps they will implement a better solution, but at the time being, nope. It's really too hard to see what we have to pick here, which vertices, which edges, perhaps you select the wrong ones on the back side. For me it's not the way that I want to go, especially for complicated meshes or areas of the mesh. So I removed the default show in front setting from my add-on, but now you ask what is the alternative, what is the solution, here it is, it's an add-on, a free add-on called Draw X-Ray, and you find it here on this Gumroad. It's the Gumroad from Bartosz Duperic, I hope I pronounced this correctly, and he has a lot of nice add-ons for Blender, and one of these is the Draw X-Ray. And the main purpose of this add-on is to keep your retopo mesh the low poly in front of the high poly mesh to draw it above. There's a paid version which also supports snapping, I haven't tested it yet, I use the default snapping feature to faces, but I want to mention this as well. Ok, so let's go ahead and set the color of the viewport shading to material again and disable the in front option of the viewport display. Alright, and for we have the draw x-ray add-on installed, we can open the viewport overlays and enable Draw X-Ray and look at this what happens. We are in edit mode and we can see this retopo mesh above the high poly. When you select the part of the mesh it is displayed in a different color. This can be configured as well, but the main feature in my opinion is this Draw Offset that defines the offset of the low poly mesh to the high poly mesh. You can also define an opacity for the faces, the edges and the vertices and the best thing is, when I rotate the viewport and see my object from the backside, there is a real back face culling, which also affects the vertices and the edges because we don't have to enable the in front option of the viewport display anymore. Ok, and now we can go ahead and use for example the polybuild feature to do the retopology. I still use snapping to faces, so I can move around the vertices and snap them to the high poly mesh. I use now the extrude feature of the polybuild tool, but there are many other ways to do retopology with Blender 2.8. For example, I like to use the add-on F2, but I will show this in detail in a future tutorial. Polybuild tool is nice for retopology, but you don't have to use it. You can also for example select edges and then press the E key to extrude. This means you can always use the basic features of Blender like move, rotate, scale, extrude and the vertices are still snapped to the high poly mesh because you have snapping to faces enabled. Here I'm using a feature of the F2 add-on, for example I have this vertex selected and I press F and the quad is added by the add-on, a nice feature, and then I select these two edges and press F and they are connected. A basic feature of Blender and what you can also see is that the vertices that are close to each other are merged. And this is the auto merge feature that you find in the tool panel and to use it effectively 
I recommend to increase the threshold and set it here to 0.015. Ok, now you can watch me retopo a bit more using the techniques that I mentioned. Ok, here you can see that the auto merge feature is a great option for simplifying your topology by merging vertices together when they are close enough to each other. Here another example for extruding with the polybuild tool and merging the vertices. And I have to say this is my workflow now, I use Blender for retopology. I don't use any other tool anymore because look at the result, a really nice high quality but low poly mesh and I know that there are great auto retopo tools and features out there but you will never be able to create a retopo mesh like this with a one click solution. Ok, now I imported this to Substance Painter and again I bake the high poly mesh onto this low poly like I did in the previous part but now for the whole mesh, again I set the distance to 0.035, that's a value that works and I have to say that I did a very lazy UV unwrapping by just using the smart UV unwrapping feature in Blender but anyway you will see in a moment that the details of the high poly mesh are baked without any issues or problems onto the retopo mesh. And it's a good opportunity to show you some great stylized smart materials that was sent to me by Adam Homoki, short name Cloaky, and I added the link to the description below. And here you can see the cracks that we sculpted into the high poly and that were baked onto the low poly, but the material has some cracks as well, but you can disable this crack layer in the layer stack. Ok, it looks pretty nice. As I said, the stylized materials can be found on the gumroad of Adam Homoki. Check it out, it's great, the link can be found in the description. So guys, that's it again, I hope you liked this tutorial and if you have any questions then just add these to the comments below and I will try to answer these as best as I can. Thanks for watching guys and if you like to support me then be my patron, this would really help a lot. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you in the next one.